Hello everyone, this is your comrade Real Soviet Bear speaking and welcome to Let's Play Diver's Dream. Um, I just want to do a bit of an introduction before we start this thing. Um, so you're probably wondering what is this game. Um, Diver's Dream is a underwater exploration game for the PlayStation 1 made by Konami. And it's not a game I've played, it's a game I have known of. For a while, um, to give you a little bit of context, um, it was European and Japanese only, so if you're from the US, you probably haven't come across it. How I came across it was, um, Serbia had these little um, our console arcades, where you basically have a bunch of consoles hooked up to individual TVs, and then you just pay for the hour, like you pay, I don't know, a dollar and you play for an hour on the PlayStation with whatever game they have. And because everybody used pirated uh, burnt discs, everybody just, all, all these console arcades just ordered stuff by the bulk. And it was a very good way to discover new stuff because you just see something based on the cover and be like, oh, I want to try this game. And I saw this one when visiting relatives at a uh, console arcade near them. That was the first time I saw the game. Uh, somebody else was playing it, I didn't try it, uh, but it looked really weird because it was completely underwater exploration. And now recently with uh, Abzu and Subnautica releasing, um, I got reminded of this game, and a few days ago I wanted to look up uh, you know, a playthrough of it or find out more info about the game, but... It's actually really hard to find information about. Um, there's only one Let's Play on YouTube that I saw. Uh, there's no wiki article. Uh, there's a Moby Games page, which details credits, but I even tried to find a manual, um, and I couldn't find that anywhere. So that kind of caught me off guard because then this was that obscure. And so I've decided to look into it and... Then I thought, let's just do a let's play of it. Let's dive into it blind and see what it is. So I don't know whether this is actually good or not. I know it's interesting because it's one of those PlayStation 1 era experimental things. But this let's play will be a lot about figuring stuff out. Because I can't even find a game fact of this properly. So yeah, it's going to be a post-commentary let's play. Just so I'm not uh, fumbling about, but for all intents and purposes, I'm figuring things out as we go. So, let's dive in. So, the first thing we'll be doing is uh, naming our character. Um, default name is Gene, but I'm just going with Burr because I, I name all stream LP related stuff like that. This is what you're looking for, isn't it? The gigantic Matilda? Yeah, she's down below, somewhere off this coast. Yes, that's the reason I came here. But I don't know anything about you. Why should I get involved with you? Relax, son. Stick with me and I'll make you a rich man. I know this ocean like the back of my hand. So do you know where the Matilda lies? W well, uh... That's it, I'm finding someone else. Wait, 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 son. I was uh, aboard the Matilda when she went down. I won't fail you. Look, if you change your mind, you can pull out any time. Come on, what do you say? I don't know whether or not you're a diver, but if you're planning to search this vast ocean all on your own, you'd better think again. You'd be far better off hooking up with me. Yes, sir. The Matilda, she was a beauty on nothing like her before or since. It's too bad. The ship is beautiful as that. Rotting away in the bottom of the sea. Okay, Pops, you've got a deal. <laughs> well, your head's screwed on right, son. You won't regret this. You know, lad, in this day and age, a man's got to hang on to his spirit, his companions, and his swimming trunks. <laughs> swimming trunks? Wait a minute. 
You aren't talking about taking a dive, are you? What did you think? Come on, let's get going. Get going? What? Now? So as you can see, the game doesn't really boast um, high quality voice acting. It's not as bad as uh, Resident Evil or Silent Hill, but yeah, it's not really good either. Anyway, this is where we're meeting the two main NPC companions we'll be having. And we're just going to check out the hub world, which is a collection of still images essentially. With the first shop we're introduced, we don't actually even get to get inside, but we'll see what it has to offer at the end of the video. So obviously before we go diving, we need to actually get equipment, which is why we're here. This is the second uh, most common place we'll be visiting because this is where we spend all our money to upgrade our equipment and obviously we can't use credit cards so because we can only pay in cash we can't really get any proper equipment But thankfully Basilio has lost his camera, so we can get free stuff. I actually know what happens when you speak no thanks, I'm assuming it's but thou must. I didn't want to waste anyone's time with that. So this little menu is something you have access to almost always. Um, it's basically looking over equipment and items, key items, stuff like that. And the only thing we really do have is old fins, so our first mission will be literally diving in our trunks underwater. See, none of this can help. So possessions is the thing we basically have to identify. Treasure list is the types of treasures we can find, and the entire game has 160 treasures, so if you're a completionist, you can try and fill up that list. And we're going back to Roberto's house, um, and Roberto's house is essentially the save game slash tutorial area. You can see I am far better at my second attempt at recording. Got to the save point in two minutes instead of three. So this is a tutorial part of the game where you just ask what things are. Uh, we're not gonna go through all of them, but I was kind of curious about what checkpoints are in the universe. And... You know, we're just breaking the fourth wall, but it doesn't matter. It's just like, oh, if you die, you can resurrect at a checkpoint. Don't reset your system. So there's no really in-universe explanation for that. The harbor is our mission um, selection area. So you can always... Because you can see you have equipment possession treasure list from any location. But the harbor is the only location you can actually deploy to missions. This game also does a lot of the um, old classic RPG things of um, encouraging you as a player to do good deeds and doing the right thing and telling, oh, you're a swell diver, swell person, and all those sorts of tra things. So you'll be seeing a lot of that in this game.
and welcome to the actual swimming phase of the game. So the two things you can do is you can swim slowly and swim quickly. And if you see those odd 3D objects floating in the air that says get, um, those are basically salvages you can pick up and you pick them up by pressing X. It's very fiddly to position yourself to them because they have a very, like, you have to be just the right distance from them uh, to use them. Now, the three things. Oh, wait. So, this is an act, like, you can. This isn't the game switching the camera. This is me switching the camera just to show you what's going on. And the first thing you have is a cave in which can actually hurt you and kill you. So it's a very uh, nice start to the game. Um, the percentage bar thing in the corner of the green thing, I'm assuming that is stamina because that depletes as we uh, swim. And then the air is obviously how much air we have. And HP is health points. So far the things I've confirmed is the jellyfish eat your HP. It seems that HP goes down by itself when your stamina is at zero and when you collide with certain geometry. I'm not entirely sure. I'm trying to find what's actually find out what's actually going on. As you can see, like our our air is slowly depleting because our stamina is at zero. Um, but thankfully, the game has air pockets, so we can just breathe back in and be fine. Diving back in is the problem because rotating is a bit of a bitch. Yeah, so how does this actually control? It controls not well. I think that's the best way I can put it. If you. It's like a worse swimming mechanic than the old Tomb Raider games, I'd say. So it's kind of tank-style swimming? Tank control swimming, yeah. I, I think that's a nice way to put it. So we found the cam camera. I have no clue how he dropped it all the way here. But, you know, there's dolphin there, and... Dolphins are... kind of important to the plot of this game. Um, the Japanese name of the game is... Uh, Dolphin's Dream. So you can assume that's... yeah, the, the, it gets weird about dolphins, that's something I managed to find out. Anyway, now we have to go all the way back to the start of the stage. Um, there was a pathway I skipped. Um, also, yeah, you can even use items to heal, so we'll just do that. Um, there was a path I skipped on the way back, where it branched before I went to the camera. That's essentially a dead end. Uh, it's full of poisonous fish, and at the end of the hallway is an antidote. To cure you from poison, but there's actually nothing really there. Yeah, that's the path, so there's really no point in going there. So you get poisoned just so you can reach the dead end and get an antidote, which if you use then and there, then you can get poisoned on the way back. So our hint to needing to go back is essentially the dolphin that's leading us. Um, in the right direction. Yeah, again, I'm not really sure why HP depletes on its own. My, my active theory right now is that it just has to do with hitting the surface and grazing your sensitive muscles on hard rock. Alright, now to actually try and turn around to get where we want, because like I said, it's a bit of a nightmare to control. Well, not a nightmare, but it's, it's not good. I've, I've played worse swimming game, swimming mechanics in games, but this one is... Ugh. So the rest of the journey is pretty straightforward, it's the same tunnel we went through. 
Now I kinda, yeah, I tried to uh, get that item as I was swimming by, but I didn't manage to get it, didn't get to a full stop, so you have to go all the way back, turn around. And, yep, there's a limit to how many things you can carry, so there's no real point in getting that one anyway. Yeah, that's that's the dining section of the game, and we're gonna have a lot more of those, including going down ships and things like that. Yeah, and the game gets uh, a bit creepy about dolphins here, but anyway, we can dive back in, which we have no real point because, you know, we, we, we have full inventory, so let's just go back to the harbor. So, if you, if you see our item list now, it's just a lot of salvage, like, very generic names. Um... First we'll go hand in the camera, and then I'll we'll actually show you what happens with all the things you found. So we got the T-burn and the word I will probably butcher since I don't really speak Italian. And these are the type of things we can find. It, I don't think, it doesn't seem like the shop gets new inventory. It just gives you everything like right off the bat that is buyable and you just don't have enough money for it. So if we go into equipment you can see that we have the T-Burn. Which is a sexy yellow suit. And we also have a small harpoon gun. Also yellow, so it can fit with our old fins and suit. So Enrico is this dude, and he is our main source of money. Thank you. So he basically takes a look at all the things he found. They will either be junk or something worthwhile. And if it's worthwhile, you just automatically sell it to him. There's no prompt or anything because there's no reason to hold on to things. Anyway, the pot happens to be a pot, which is really good. It's thankfully not junk. Uh, I tried speeding up this process, just be holding down the button, but it just... I guess they want you to feel rewarded. So when he does find something, it's like, oh, how much is it worth? Well, you'll find out in the next line. Oh, it's 230. Oh, that is so good. And somehow this is a chess piece. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of weird stuff that we find, I... I trust. Yeah, yeah, we don't want money, we just really want to unload this crap from our pockets, it's fine. Anyway, that is basically everything we can do for our first mission, and that's the first taste of Diver's Dream. Hope you all enjoyed it, and... I will see you next time.